The story begins with the orcish horde preparing to invade the human world. This is triggered by Gul'dan, the orc chieftain who possesses evil energy magic. He needs to constantly drain the life force of numerous Drene in order to sustain himself. This leads to the impending destruction of their original homeland. In order to acquire more life energy, Gul'dan decides to lead the strongest warriors from various tribes. He plans to open a portal using evil energy magic to invade the world of humans, known as Azeroth Continent. He is named Durotan, the chieftain of Frostwolf Clan, a tribe of orcs. In order to ensure the continuation of his tribe, Durotan decides to lead his people in search of a new homeland. On the night before their departure, he struggles to sleep, concerned about his pregnant wife. He decides to secretly bring his wife along to Azeroth Continent without the knowledge of the other tribes. The next morning, Durotan and Orgrim, carrying their belongings, arrive at the rendezvous point. This bald man is none other than Orgrim, a legendary hero in the world of Warcraft. The sound of the horn signals the gathering of warriors from each tribe outside the portal. The imprisoned Draenei people are about to become the fuel for Gul'dan to open the portal. Desperately, she pleads with the woman beside her to release her child. This seductive half-orc, named Garona, is mistreated by the orcs due to her mixed heritage. She has been imprisoned by Gul'dan for a long time. As she is proficient in the languages of various races, Gul'dan keeps her around to translate at any time. Gul'dan begins his pre-battle speech, and the crowd becomes heated. Gul'dan stretches out his hands, and numerous Draenei lives are drained. Desperate Draenei people die in agonizing screams. Gul'dan hurls the absorbed energy towards the portal. A vibrant landscape of continent is revealed. The orcs enter the portal. Unlike others, Durotan does not feel excited because his pregnant wife will also enter the battlefield. In the time tunnel, his wife suddenly experiences intense pain in her belly. Durotan is extremely worried and wants to help, but he is completely unable to assist at the moment. He can only watch as his wife endures the intense pain and slowly falls. A strong light disperses, and they are successfully transported to the world inhabited by humans. The intense pain causes Durotan's wife to immediately remove her equipment and try to give birth to the baby. When Durotan tries to come and help, he is stopped by Blackhand, the deputy leader of the Horde. Blackhand wants to hold Durotan accountable for bringing his wife to the Azeroth continent without permission. Fortunately, Gul'dan discovers the situation. Rather than blaming Durotan, Gul'dan helps deliver his wife's baby. His wife lets out a powerful roar, and a little life is brought into this world. However, due to the unfamiliar environment, the fragile life is barely hanging on. Being the first orcs born in the human world, it holds deep significance for the orcs on their first expedition. Gul'dan believes that this child will have an extraordinary future, so he is determined to save him. Gul'dan uses his evil energy to drain the life of a deer and transfers the energy to the child. Gul'dan raises the baby high, adding a boost to the morale of the Horde. This little child is none other than Thrall, the great leader of the Horde who echoes throughout the entire world of Warcraft. In the distant dwarf country of Ironforge, another heroic figure is meeting with the King of the Dwarves. He is Lothar, the supreme commander of the humans. Today marks the 100th anniversary of the alliance between the Dwarves and humans, the technologically advanced dwarf country presents Lothar with their latest invention, the rifle. However, just as they are about to demonstrate the rifle's might, a dwarf guard rushes in with a frontline battle report. The report states that one of Lothar's garrisons has been attacked by unknown creatures. Lothar immediately returns to Stormwind to inspect the bodies of the fallen soldiers with Cadgar. To their astonishment, Rare evil energy emanates from Lothar's mouth, indicating a grave situation beyond their understanding. They realize that they must summon the guardian of the humans, Medivh, to explain what is happening. However, only the king has the authority to summon the guardian. Lothar and Cadgar hastily make their way to Goldshire to find King Lane.
Kadgar informs the king of the severity of the situation and urges him to seek the assistance of the guardian at Karajan. Before they can proceed, a massive fire breaks out in Elwyn Forest to the southeast, signaling yet another attack on a garrison. The king's face turns grave, realizing the urgency of the situation. He removes a ring from his finger and hands it to Lothar. He urges him to quickly go to Karazhan and summon the guardian, Medev, for consultation. Lothar invites Kadgar to accompany him, and they ride griffins from dusk till dawn. With the help of the griffins, they arrive in just one day. The old steward has been waiting outside the building for quite some time. The architecture, hidden among the mountains, appears extremely sacred. After the old steward learns of the situation, he leads Lothar upstairs to meet with Medev. As Kadgar is only an apprentice in magic, he can only stay in the library. Suddenly, a specter appears beside him, but vanishes when he approaches to investigate. Inexplicably, a magic book is summoning him, and the markings on his arm guide him incessantly. Following the symbol's guidance, Kadgar takes out Medev's book. They begin their return journey, and Medev waves his arm forcefully, creating a blue magical portal. The three of them appear in the Stormwind throne room out of thin air. King Lane's face brightens upon seeing Medev's arrival, and the group gathers around the sand table for a discussion. But they still have no idea what creatures are attacking the humans. They decide to immediately go to Elwyn Forest for investigation. Upon arriving in the forest, they see scenes of recent attacks along the road. They decide to survey the area, and the fresh blood stains on the rocks indicate that the attack occurred not long ago. Mediev is astonished as he looks at the still-burning evil energy on the trees. As Kadgar prepares to examine a peculiar corpse, a heavy iron hammer knocks down one of the soldiers. In the chaos, everyone quickly grabs their weapons and goes on high alert. Black Hand lets out a furious roar, calling his ambush to surround them. Facing the towering and strong orcs, the humans seem like ants. Even with their full body armor, they cannot withstand the weighty iron hammer. Kadgar uses magic and coincidentally, Duratan sees it. He casts a shield to block Duratan's attack. In the midst of the chaos, only Lothar can handle the orcs. Black Hand lifts a horse high and smashes it down onto the crowd. Medivh prepares to chant magic to face the orcs. The soldiers begin to falter in fear. Lothar's son almost dies, but is grateful that his father arrives in time to rescue him. Just as Lothar is lecturing his son, Black Hand throws him aside. His sword is knocked out of his hand, and Black Hand approaches step by step. Lothar remembers the rifle given to him by the king of the dwarf country. He didn't expect the rifle to be so powerful, hence the origin of Black Hand's name. At this moment, Medivh's magic is ready. He raises his hands high and swiftly strikes the orcs directly. The emitted magic is able to corrode the bodies of the orcs. Black Hand realizes the power of this evil magic and quickly organizes the orcs to retreat from the scene. <laughs> After casting the magic, Medev also senses that something is wrong. He feels an evil force controlling his body. He quickly takes the staff from Kadgar's hand and opens a portal to return to Karaj's hand for recuperation. Due to the human's limited understanding of the orcs, it is necessary to capture one orc alive for research. Lothar quickly organizes the remaining troops to pursue. The humans close in on the orcs, and the orcs decide not to run away anymore. They immediately dismount their horses and engage in battle. The war wolves shuttle through the forest and come to a crucial road, where a sudden attack knocks down a soldier. The orc angrily approaches Lothar. Ordinary attacks have little effect against the towering and fierce orc. Lothar seizes the opportunity, letting his warhorse kick the orc and knocking him unconscious. At this moment, the orc's mounts return wanting to rescue their owners. Facing the large war wolves, Lothar threatens them with the lives of their masters. As expected, the loyal war wolves only roar a few times before choosing to leave. On the other side, Garona, a half-orc who was just released by Duratan, happens to encounter Kadgar on her escape. Kadgar immediately chants magic 
to control her on a tree. The sexy half-orc is also a legendary character in the Warcraft world. Having just arrived in the human's world, she is captured by humans. The fact that this half-orc can speak the Hume's language surprises Lothar. However, the nearby orcs consider speaking the human's language as an insult to orcs. Angry and trying to kill Garona, she is stopped in time by Lothar. Garona is brought before the king and interrogated in the Great Hall. This is her first time in the human's world and she is unfamiliar with human's etiquette. She is curious about the new environment. Even in front of the king, she is not overly restrained, shows her original wildness. The king points to the map on the ceiling and asks her to indicate where the orcs come from. Garona tells the king that she does not belong to this world. The orcs came to the Azeroth continent through Gul'dan's evil energy, opening a portal. She informs them that a large number of orcs are gradually occupying humans' territory. King Lane offers her a tempting condition. If she helps humans find the orcs gathering place, she will be promised freedom in the humans' world. Garona has grown up in the contempt and imprisonment of the Horde, so freedom is something she desires greatly. However, Garona is not easily convinced of the King's promise. To show sincerity, King Lane specifically arranges for the Queen, who understands women's hearts, to come and console her. He even directly presents her with a royal dagger. This finally dispels Garona's concerns, and for the first time, she feels a sense of belonging to the humans. Duritan and Blackhand return to the Horde overnight and inform Gul'dan about the situation. But Gul'dan, without understanding the truth, accuses Blackhand of running away in battle and bringing shame to the orcs. He insists on judging and killing Blackhand. This kind of trial greatly displeases the other orcs, but they can only swallow their anger in the face of the evil Gul'dan. Duritan is deeply troubled by the imminent end of his comrade's life. Even if it means offending Gul'dan, he is determined to intervene and save him. He steps forward and reasons with Gul'dan, expressing that the purpose of their people coming to the Azeroth continent is only for survival. While war may be unavoidable, they must not kill each other. He hopes that Gul'dan can change his evil mindset. Gul'dan appears patient on the surface but holds deep resentment in his heart. He is determined to get rid of Durotan. Durotan knows that he will face retaliation for offending Gul'dan. As he looked at the newborn thrall in his hands, he fell into contemplation. Gul'dan's recklessness is bound to result in the manipulation of his people. He wants to do something for his people. The next day, Duratan found Orgrim and expressed his inner thoughts. Since the first wave of orcs arrived in Azeroth through the portal, they have successfully occupied Menethil Harbor in the wetlands and the Arathi Highlands, establishing their own place in the Azeroth continent. However, Duratan discovered that wherever Gul'dan goes, the land withers. Gul'dan, corrupted by evil energy, has become increasingly malevolent. If they want to live in their new home, they must stop Gul'dan. Duratan stated that he has come up with a plan and is determined to join forces with the humans to eliminate Gul'dan. Meanwhile, Garona leads Lothar and others to search for the orcs' gathering place. On the way, Cadgir continues to focus on studying Medivh's book. After observing, Lothar discovers that many humans are being held captive by the orcs. Garona tells Lothar that Gul'dan continuously absorbs life energy. In two days, he will use that energy to open the portal, transporting the remaining orcs to the Azeroth continent. Just as Lothar was leaving, Duratan noticed their presence, quickly covered Cadgar's mouth from behind, preventing him from chanting spells. He then asked Garona to help translate his grand plan. He expressed his desire to join forces with the humans to eliminate Gul'dan. He planned to meet with the leader of the humans on the Black Rock Mountain before sunset. In order to secure the future of the Horde, Garona agreed to this request, and if successful, she hoped to join the Frostwolf clan. Duratan said that she would be safer among the humans. He led the Frostwolf clan to the Dark Canyon, with King Lane's legion of humans on the other side. 
Humans and orcs engaged in their first cooperative conversation here. To ensure safety, Duratan assigned his trusted brother, Orgrim, to patrol the rear. While the guardian of the humans, Medivh arrived early at the highest point of the canyon, vigilantly monitoring the entire scene to ensure King Lane's safety. Duratan expressed his determination to King Lane to eliminate Gul'dan. At this point, King Lane naturally agreed because in just two days, Gul'dan would open the portal again. Transport more orcs to Azeroth continent, seizing human territory. Just as an agreement was about to be reached, an unexpected event occurred. Gul'dan ordered the orcs, who had already been lying in ambush, to launch a surprise attack. The conversation between the two sides was interrupted, and King Lane quickly organized his members to evacuate. The sudden change left Durotan unable to explain. When he turned to look at King Lane, he saw a look of extreme resentment in his eyes. Durotan felt aggrieved in his heart but could only vent his anger on the enemies in front of him. While humans were retreating, they were also ambushed by Gul'dan. Moreover, more enemies appeared on the road ahead. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.